three-year-old twins, and I also run my own business, um, previously Little Mess, which was a, lead, um, a messy play class and parties. And now I run Play With Love, which is just launched today, selling um, story logs um, and emotion logs. So um, I'm here as part of Leeds Kindness, Compassion and Wellbeing Week because I think it's really important that as mums that we're kind to ourselves and we help build those relationships with, with our children and enable play to be um, a fun experience, which is what it is for the children. But us as adults uh, really struggle with that because of all the things that happen in our lives, um, all the worries that we have with work, with keeping on top of the housework, of shopping, all those things, um, they kind of take over our thought process, um, which means actually our ability to think and be imaginative and play is deep, deep, pushed deep, deep down. Um, and we're not able to do that as well as what we could or what can children can do. So I'm here to really sort of talk about building our relationship up with our children, how we can help our children learn and develop through play instead of it having to be sitting down doing our ABCs and one, two, threes, how that can all be incorporated in play in a messy aspect, uh, but without the mess being um, out of control, if you don't like mess, without it being um, a stressful experience for you. Um, and hopefully it will allow you to have a little play with those with your little ones and it will then bring you together to then leave that child children to go and explore that play by themselves whilst um you go take a well-earned coffee or tea break like what i'm doing right now because my children are outside playing and i don't have um any childcare at the moment so i'm taking a coffee when i can and doing this video for you. So, my journey started about 12 years ago, um, and even though Little Mess was only set up in September last year, um, and he's no longer running due to uh, the COVID pandemic, um, it started 12 years ago when I moved to America um, with some friends of mine who were American to go look after their children as an au pair. Um, they were currently one and three at the time. Um, and I discovered my love for messy play then on doing an activity, um, a body painting activity, uh, where we they stripped down to their nappies, we rolled out loads of play, paper, put the paint all over the paper and let them explore with all the different parts of their bodies. Um, so that's where my love of messy play came from. And it was only throughout the years, and then particularly then having my own children, that I really got back into it and really wanted to, um, to um, I guess, explore all the different avenues that mess, messy play um, can, can do for our children. Um, and the one thing I've learned, first-hand knowledge, um, is that actually the children can develop in so many wonderful ways. Um, by playing in controlled um, mess. So I set up Little Mess, which was then doing classes for children aged six months plus. It could be up to four years old. Um, however, I have my nieces um, who are eight and ten and they love it when I set up a messy play activity here. So messy play is beneficial for all ages and you'd be surprised at the sensory satisfa satisfaction that you get yourself, us as adults, um, putting our hands in things like that as well. So um, if you're not big into mess, then I would definitely recommend more dry activities um, to get you going. The same with your child. Not all children like mess and know what to do or explore with it. So start off with a really simple activity. Um, such as some pasta. It could be that you just put the pasta out as it is with some scoops and some bottles or jugs and get them scooping and transferring. Um, when you get more comfortable, you might want to go to rice. When you get more comfortable to that, you might want to go to flour um, and progress it on from there. So yeah, so you can really start off with anything. Um, I'm not here to t 
teach you how to, to play with your children. Um, I'm more here to sort of discuss about building the relationships and the, the development that we can do with our children. So for instance, within all of my Little Mess classes, I um, had set elements of educational development elements that I would um, focus on. So we would always have a mark making table um, that would be making marks in multiple different um, materials. Um, it could be using tools, it could be using our fingers, it could be using our feet. Um, it might be that we're using it on the floor, it might be on the wall, it could be on a table. So we're not only learning to make marks with different parts of our bodies, but we're also learning to make those marks at different levels. Um, this helps develop children eventually then into holding pens. It helps us develop in our cross the body work, uh, which is building our core strength um, and our gross motor skills as well as our fine motor skills. Um, these Learning to make these marks, especially big circles, is really beneficial of our handwriting skill process later on in life um, when we get to early years and school age. So mark making is a really important um, activity to do with our children to opposed to thinking, let's get them holding a pen, let's get us holding a pencil and using that. They're all amazing things still. We love to draw, we love to colour. Um, they're all brilliant skills still to learn. However, for me, I found that playing is beneficial because we don't feel like we're learning. Um, and we're learning through fun, we're learning through play, we're learning through, oh, we can make this, and we're learning on a bigger scale than just on a pen and paper scale. Um, so a real mixture of those mark making skills are brilliant. Um, and I cannot believe um, how far my two have come on since all the mark making activities we've done um, over the last three years. They are now three years old and they are able to hold their pens properly. They are able to write their names along with other letters. They are able to draw shapes, put those shapes together to make pictures such as houses, flowers and so on. So they've really come on um, and I am a believer that that is down to the messy plate that we have done over the years. Um, the next activity that we always had set up was a transferring and pouring station. So I mentioned briefly earlier about pasta. You could use it with water, rice. Um, you can use it with slime. You can use it with Play-Doh. Any activity whatsoever, anything you can do. Um, as long as you've got something that you can move it to, then that is a transferring activity. If you have scoops, um, then that's good as well. It's just, again, using our fine motor skills, hand-eye coordination, and it's just getting our body and our brains thinking and working a little bit differently that are all gonna help those amazing little skills build up to help us when we are a little bit older and go to school, um, as well as as we progress into teenage and adult years. We also had a finger gym. So all of these activities really come hand in hand with the development opportunities that it gives our children. So finger gyms are things that work our hands, work the muscles in our hands and our fingers, which again is gonna help our pen grip, it's gonna help us be able to write for longer and faster writing, so it's not gonna take our time. Um, a lot of children have such vivid imaginations and can tell wonderful stories. Um, and real detailed stories. But actually when it comes to putting pen to paper, their brains work a lot faster than their hands can, um, which can be quite frustrating for them because they have all these amazing ideas, but actually getting it down on paper, it takes them so much longer. So frustrations come out and those um, beautiful stories are not able to be translated onto the paper. Um, so it takes a lot of practice for us to build up our strength in our hands. So finger gyms are a great activity. So again, Play-Doh, let's get massaging, massaging that Play-Doh, rolling it out, let's make sausages, make balls with them, and then we can you can progress on them with the skills of that. Um, using tweezers are really good. You can buy them on multiple different websites. Uh, I find the Learning Resource website um, 
through Amazon is amazing. You get giant ones and the crocodile ones are particularly good. They're a bit softer, a bit smaller. So for newbies, they are really nice. You can use it with pom-poms. Again, you could use it as a transferring table where you're using your tweezers to tra transfer. So all of these things are helping building our hand muscles up. It could be threading. Threading through things also really helps our, our finger gym. And it just gets all these little digits working a bit harder. And our, our hand-eye coordination as well. Um, it helps us with our problem solving. Um, as well. So yeah, there's loads of real beneficial things. So that's where Little Mesh really, really focused on um, of having loads of really fun activities out, but there was an educational benefit to what, for our children behind them and it was all through play. Um, hopefully as well, that meant that parents found it a bit easier to know what to do. Um, now, it's hard as being a parent. It's hard to get that coffee break. It's hard to constantly think of things to do. So what I will say, and I'll set up, I've got little bits here that I'm gonna show you later on and bring the children involved, uh, my children to come and get involved to show you how quick and easy it can be. And it doesn't have to be hard work and it doesn't have to be this big, fancy, elaborate, tough tray that's set up, that's taking me hours to do and nobody's interested in playing with it. Um, it can literally be, on a plate it can literally be in a box um it can be on a tough tray it can be across the whole table it can be on the floor whatever you want and whatever you're comfortable with but the idea that i want to sort of get across today is um to have that one-on-one -on -one time have that two-on-one -on -one time to have that three four depending on how many children you've got time with those set it up explore it might be that the children are not interested in it in the slightest once you've set it up or it's on the table waiting for them. But you'd be amazed that if you just sat there and played with what you've set up yourself, they might then come and have a nosy over and think, mm, what's mum or what's dad doing or what's gran doing or what's what's my carer doing or what's my brother doing, um, my sister, whoever it may be. Um, what are they doing? That looks a lot of fun. Um, why are they getting their hands dirty? And oh, it's all right for us to do that. And actually, their children will engage with that at some point when they're ready. They might just want to sit and look at it for a few days um, until they're comfortable with exploring it further, especially if these children are not used to mess and, and are a bit unsure about mess. So don't be disheartened if you set something up and you're really excited about a new threading activity with Cheerio cereal and a straw or Cheerio cereal and some um, shoelaces or pasta, whatever it might be you've set up, don't be disheartened if they're not interested in it there and then. Leave it out, let them come to it in their own time and they will. Um, but it's really important to sort of try and have that time playing one-on-one -on -one or however many children it is um, that you're engaging with have that time, use language like, oh, what do we think is gonna happen if this, if we do this? Could we do this? Could we make it a different shape? How do we think it would work instead of using our finger if we used a paintbrush in that flower or in that shampoo? What other tools could we make to make those marks? So get that conversation going, um, because again, that's gonna really help the language of the children. It's gonna help the communication between you both. They know that you're fully engaged in what you're in what you're playing, um, and that you're wanting to explore more. The more questions you ask, um, ask the children. Why do you think it's going to do that? Oh, did that work out how we expected it to? Mm, it didn't. Why didn't it work out like we thought it did? Oh, was it better than our ideas? Those kind of questions. It will then get the children thinking as well and it will get them problem solving and before you know it and before you even realise you will be doing maths and technology and STEM work, your science, your maths, your technology and your English, all those things are all going to come into play um, while you're playing without even realising um, and when your children then play more independently. Um, they will then start asking themselves those questions. They will then start exploring and actually their engagement in play will become longer, which is what we all want to be able to sit and make dinner or sit and have a cup of coffee or go do the ironing or go do a bit of cleaning. We want that half an hour slot where we can set something up, 
five minutes play with them and that gets them going and gets their imagination flowing. What I will say is just because it's mess, it doesn't have to be um, a stressful thing for you. Set it up, go do your jobs, and then all it will be a little hoover around the area, a little sweep, maybe a, a wipe around the table, um, depending on how much you get out and on what surface, whether it's in a box, it's a bit more contained. If it's on a plate, you're not gonna have as much on there. So there's not going to be as much mess everywhere for you to worry about. If it's on a big tough tray and you've got four children engaged in it, which is amazing, um, then expect that's gonna be a lot bigger mess, um, that you might need a bigger hoover. But think of the bigger picture that you're able to go clean the rest of the house while everybody's having fun, and then all you have to do is come back in and think about, right, okay, let's tidy that up. Get the children engaged in tidying it up. Give them a dustpan and brush each. Um, or give one a dustpan, give the other one a brush and get them working as a team. Somebody have a sweeping brush. So don't let this clearing up of the mess put you off from wanting to do it, is what I'm trying to say. Make the activity and make the play session part of that clearing up process as well. Um, because kids love to help with those things they love to wipe the table down they love to sweep so get them involved in it um all i'd say is if you're in a hurry to then leave somewhere um finish the activity earlier or do the activity on another day because what we don't want to do is become stressed trying to tidy up um, because that might just put a dampener on the amazing activity and the amazing work that the kids have just done and played um and Doing so, you're providing the kids with so much stimulation and fun, um, but you're also giving yourself that well-earned break. You're giving yourself that opportunity to have five minutes to do whatever you need to do with it. It might be to go grab a shower. Um, and don't feel guilty about that. Don't feel guilty about leaving them to play independently. Children need that independent play. Um, to be successful, to um, to develop their personalities, to become more independent. Um, they need that time to play by themselves. And we all have that horrible parent guilt, uh, carer guilt, that we shouldn't be leaving them to play and we should be with them all the time. Well, let's face it, that's hard work. <laughs> and parenting and caring, caring parenting, and guardianships, looking after children, whether you are in a nursery setting, school setting, it's hard work. So be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself and give yourself those breaks um, because it's really important. Sit back when they are playing nicely together and watch them. Absorb it with your cuppa. Tell them that, you're, that you think they're playing wonderfully. Give them the positive engagement and the positive reinforcement that they're doing a wonderful job. And oh gosh, aren't you playing so nice together? Positivity that you're giving your children will also encourage longer play. Children want to please us. Children want to make us happy. Um, and if they can do that by playing and we're telling them how wonderful it is, they will continue it. And that's not just being kind to ourselves, then it's also being really kind to our children. And it's really building our bond and our relationship up perfectly with them. So um, that's what I'm a big believer in. Um, because us as parents and carers, um, particularly, um, really do put pressure on ourselves to be perfect. And we're not perfect. And we're not going to be, and if there was a right way of doing it, there would be a book out there telling us how to do it. There isn't. Um, so be kind to yourself. Um, look after yourselves. Give yourself those five minutes and go back in and play and have fun and play with love and play with passion and find that inner child within our hearts again to to cherish these moments with our children because they grow up and they're not going to want to play with us for long and we're going to regret that we didn't play harder and we didn't play for longer and that that washing pile of washing um all that bathroom that we didn't clean this week or this today or however often 
that we did it when it could have waited. Uh, my house is no way perfect or tidy all the time, um, but I have my little routine and I stick to it. That works for me and, and the kids enjoy it and they're happy and they play really well independently. Um, and ultimately that makes me happy. So be kind to yourselves, be kind to your families and be kind to each other um, because, you know, it takes it takes community to raise children. Don't feel you're doing it alone. Um, please get in touch if you ever want to discuss more of playing opportunities and playing um, advice. I'm not a play therapist. Um, I will put out there, I am not trained in this. I am just a mum that is passionate about play and messy play in particular and learning and developing our children. So yeah, um, I hope you've all enjoyed this. I am going to get the children along now and I'll set up a really quick activity and I will show you how quick and easy it is and I will get you to see how we can also incorporate the same play but for two different age groups. Okay, so I will get them over now. Okay, so here are the children. Are you gonna help demonstrate for me? Yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just use some flour. Now with flour, make sure you always bake it before you play. If you bake it, it becomes edible then. So if your children do still put things in their mouth, it's going to be safe for them. Uh, although be it, it might not be very nice. So on this one, we're going to do two activities um, aimed at two different age groups. Even though you two are the same age, we're going to do different activities. So it's going to show people if they have a smaller child, what we can do to somebody that's a bit older, trying to do some more mark making. So, I'm a bit smaller. Are you a little bit smaller? Okay. So what we've got here, we've got some letters that we're going to use. This is from the Play With Love range, but you can do it from any sort of letters that you've got. You might collect bottle tops and you can just write the letters on. You might have magnet letters or anything at all. So we're gonna use these ones today. So you're gonna have your name written out here. How do we spell your name? So what I want you to do is I want you to practice your letters with your finger in the flower. Okay. okay? So you can go now, that's fine. And then what we're gonna do is I'm going to pour some flour into this one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I want you to pour it. You can pour it into these. You can pour it straight into your bun cases and you can make flower buns. So you can keep pouring between them. You can do it however you wish. Okay. That's it. Are you spreading yours out? Very good. Now, do we think we could use anything else to do your letters with? Instead of using our finger, what else could we use? Just paint brushes. Paint brushes. Would you like a paintbrush to try that with? Yeah, so keep, pra keep practicing with your finger and I will get you a paintbrush. Is there anything you need to go in your cup, in your cupcakes? Yeah. What would you like? Um, just a paint. You want a paintbrush as well? Okay, so keep doing your activity. Yeah, you can have a look whatever you want in there. There he is. Yay, 
Peter Rabbit. Could you use Peter Rabbit to make your name? Could you use Peter Rabbit? So as you can see, the children will then decide what they're wanting to further that play. Start really basic and then let them introduce new things that keeps them playing for longer. Now, children will engage in an activity for one minute per year that they have been alive. So no, these no. should really, in theory, play for around three minutes. So bear that in mind. They might come back to it later on, or they might continue playing for longer if we keep adding different toys in and activities. Please, please, I put some in it and, and paint all this and make real cupcakes. Oh, well, we could make real cupcakes from it, couldn't we? So because we're playing with flour, he's now wanting to bake and make real cupcakes. So the list is endless. They are now deciding what they want to do to extend their play. Okay, thank you.